Okay. All right, Marissa, you can introduce yourself and start. All right. Can everybody see this okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so my name is Marissa. Like Jen said, I'm a speech language pathologist uh, for their Centers for Rehab Services, and I am uh, primarily working out of the Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry. Um, but we do, for Centers for Rehab Services, have locations all over the great, greater Pittsburgh area. Um, I'm not sure how far this meeting goes, but we have um, therapists up into Erie, over towards Altoona. Um, so we, we're really all over. And if you need anything, I'd be happy to try to connect you, you know, where you are locally to the, the closest location. Um, so I kind of have to say, you know, as a disclaimer to start, this presentation isn't intended for any formal diagnostic treatment uh, for what we're going to discuss today. But if you do have any symptoms related to the content um, of this presentation, any other conditions, it's always best to consult your medical professionals. Um, so for those of you that attend regularly, I was actually out last month um, and a colleague of mine, Kira, did, this, uh, did the presentation for the month. Um, and to my knowledge, the, the, I spoke with Jen and she said the, the topic of interest was organizational strategies. So that's what we're gonna be covering today um, across a variety of environments. Um, I will say there's a lot of information. I got excited because I found a really good source. So I, there's a lot on here, um, but I did post the, bo the book, um, which I'll show you on the next si slide, I believe, um, where I got a lot of this information. And the presentation is recorded, so you can always go back. Um, but there was a, a lot of really good information that I found. So um, also in this book was um, something that I wanted to kind of reiterate. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result from Albert Einstein. So when it, the first thing I turned to in this book that I found was actually this quote. And I thought that this was really important to remember because we talk a lot um, in these presentations about things that are difficult and, and trying to come up with strategies and tools to help us work through some of the complications that we're having. So a lot of times I'll recommend, you know, thinking about your thinking, thinking about this is problematic for me. What can I do to change versus continuing to do the same things that might be um, not as efficient. I myself work on these things every day. So I think it's important to kind of keep in mind that there, you can change and um, it's just about figuring out the things that can help um, make these uh, impairments become more, uh, more manageable. So the goals for today's session are to increase awareness that improved organization can really help to compensate for difficulties with memory, attention, or executive functioning skills. Um, most importantly, to obtain different strategies to help improve organization, both within home, work, and that can translate to also educational environments. Um, and as we're talking through this, going back to the last slide, you know, self-reflecting on our own organization and where we can better implement different strategies to help us in day-to-day -day life. And beyond that, this is the therapist coming out of me, taking what you've learned, um, and then even discussing with families to kind of adapt what you've learned, um, develop tools. You will find, and, and some of you might have already found this um, through your journey, but having family on board from a medical standpoint, from a therapy standpoint, you know, emotional standpoint, really is going to help. Um, and especially with organization, if you're really trying to develop strategies, but not everybody's on board, it can make it a lot more difficult. So this is the book. So it is a brain injury um, geared book, um, but all of the strategies would still be the same. So I would use these strat same strategies for a patient that I might have with, ha with a brain injury, stroke, um, different, you know, chemotherapy, radiation, tumors, you know, across the gamut, um, neurodegenerative diagnoses. There, there's so much information um, and it has the same strategies and tools that we're gonna be discussing today, plus tools for cooking, recipes, cleaning, 
They even provide checklists in there for seasonal cleaning, pre-holiday cleaning, all sorts of things. I might have to use this myself actually. Um, and also some tools to help uh, with managing laundry. And that's just to kind of skim the surface of, of what's all in there. So I kind of broke up um, this presentation uh, by location of our house or our, or our um, vocational environments, but also time. So we're going to start out talking about time today. Um, some of these things have been a little bit repetitive, you know, from prior sessions, but I think pertaining just to organization, these things are very important to consider. The main thing here is writing things down. That can be um, planners, calendars, you might want to consider the use of a family calendar or um, syncing electronic calendars so that everybody is on the same page. Going back to that approach, that thought that this really should be a team approach if needed. Um, establishing, <clears throat> excuse me, a schedule for looking at your planner. I know myself, sometimes it's hard, um, you know, we might write things down consistently, but it's not going to help us at all if we don't look at it. So I a lot of times will encourage people to review um, your plan each day, or sorry, each week and daily, but also keeping one schedule. So and I, I kind of uh, go down to this below, um, but regularly look at that schedule. So establish a routine. Every Sunday, you look at the week ahead to help yourself plan. And then um, every night after dinner, for example, look at the plan for the next day. Look at the plan the first thing in the morning. Periodically check throughout the day. This can help us with our time management and just time organization. Um, sorry, I jumped around a little bit. So we're going to go back up to uh, planning trips and errands. Um, some things you might want to consider. What times do certain businesses open? Consider their location higher priority. Um, you know, if you have to run four errands, this might be helpful so that you're not having to run back and forth or, um, you know, waste time with extra driving um, without preparing and planning ahead. For meetings and appointments, um, it can be helpful to write down dates, times. And I, I forget about this one a lot, but also deadlines. Um, and again, this, this can be for Mm -hmm. Paperwork for insurance, even. It doesn't have to be a meeting or an appointment, but just writing down any deadlines um, and then things that you might have to bring to meetings, uh, doctor's appointments, uh, things that you might have to plan for your kids. Also for time, setting alarms as external reminders can be very helpful. Um, even for, you know, I sometimes have clients that I work with them even to just set timers to feed the dogs or get the children off the bus to remember to take medication. Um, I set my own alarms to remind myself to um, give my dog her monthly medication. Um, so these external uh, reminders also can help improve our time management. I've talked a little bit before in prior presentations also about what I call the five minute rule. Um, and if you are somebody that tends to get distracted. Sometimes it can be helpful to set a timer for about five minutes. Um, in this case, you would work for about five minutes. Don't, don't stray away from that task. Only work on that one task at that time. If at the end of the five minutes you're done, then you can leave and go and do, you know, go on to the next thing. If not, you can set a timer for five more minutes, either until the task is completed or until you find a good time to um, take a break. And kind of along the lines of writing things down, to-do lists are very important. But we really wanna make sure that we prioritize. Um, keeping it short is important. Um, you know, I, I know sometimes looking at a very long list can be daunting. So if you keep a short list, maybe for day to day, that seems a little bit more achievable. It can also kind of help also from a stress um, and just kind of feeling overwhelmed standpoint. If you do have a long, um, long-term projects list, try to keep it separate and try to write your small daily list um, on another sheet of paper, which is similar to the next point of just making small goals and breaking larger tasks into smaller parts. 
So I'm just going to use um, the example of maybe a, a, a document, um, maybe for insurance. Sometimes they can be very lengthy and it's a lot to look at those. So saying to yourself, I'm just going to complete section one today. Tomorrow I can do section two, the next day section three. That can make things seem a lot more achievable. But with using all these strategies, you do need to give yourself more time. So you might need to start earlier um, in the process to allow yourself to get things done. And one thing I think sometimes we forget to do is reward ourselves for our success. So, you know, even those small things day to day, I mean, they, they really do mean a lot in the grand scheme of things. So don't feel like you can't reward yourself because you remembered all five things you wanted at the grocery store. That's huge. That's a really good thing. So don't forget to reward yourself even for those little things that, um, that happen day to day. So now more into actual physical organization of things. So um, to start, we're gonna talk about just general home decluttering. Um, and like I said earlier, I am giving you a lot of information. I got really excited about all of the stuff that I found. So please feel free to go back and, and read if it's hard to take notes and keep up um, or just listen this time and, and go back and, and um, watch the presentation later. Um, so the first thing with is, is to actually declutter. So some of the suggestions um, that I do give, but were also reinforced in this book were to start with the most problematic areas, um, schedule a time, set small goals, um, think about, you know, one of those areas can be just cleaning off the desks in your house, cleaning off the tables, um, a specific room, anything like that. Whatever you decide is the most problematic area, start there. Um, ask for help. If you have a roommate, if you have kids, if you have siblings that are around, it's okay to ask for help. And this is where I think a lot of times family is a huge, um, a huge help for this. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I know sometimes I put things away and then my husband will take it out and put it somewhere else, right? So uh, that can be a little bit frustrating. Maybe if you have children or, um, you know, a, a significant other, you know, your, your parents are living anything. Um, it's really helpful to get the whole family on board with this stuff and really kind of can set everybody up for success. Um, what as you're reducing clutter, separate trash um, from things to donate and keep them in piles. Um, there are a lot of good um, donation centers out there that depending on what what you're trying to, to declutter will take stuff or just the important part is making sure that you're separating everything. Labeling can be very helpful. Um, uh, I know there's a lot of like like label makers for folders, bins, um, things, things in the cabinet that can be helpful. Um, one thing that I recommend a lot of times too is to put things away immediately. So if something comes up, if you can, try to put it away right in that moment. That prevents you from forgetting to put it away later. Um, and it's just one thing that's done and it's off of your plate and you don't have to come back to it. Another thing for just ongoing organization once you're, um, reduce, you're able to reduce some clutter is to establish routine or give items a home. Again, very important when it comes to, to having the support of others in your environment. Um, if you believe that having something somewhere is gonna help you remember it better, but somebody keeps moving it, then that's gonna kind of um, be a little bit of a barrier. You might want to consider keeping individual bags for certain needs. Um, I know sometimes I'm, I'm strutting into work with a laptop bag and a work bag and a purse and a lunchbox. So, you know, every, trying to keep things, it can be tedious, but, you know, having bags for different needs can be helpful. Um, having a work bag, having your children's school or activity bag, having a bag for your personal items or your purse can kind of keep things organized based on their needs. And to wrap up for general home decluttering, um, 
Oh, I, I repeated the ongoing organization. Um, I repeated the whole slide. Sorry about that. <laughs> So moving on um, to the bathroom, again, declutter. So uh, from that book, a good suggestion was to have a rule of thumb that if you haven't used something in six months or more, get rid of it. Um, that goes the same for reviewing or for um, getting rid of expired medications, for prescriptions. Um, and again, you know, some of us might have a lot of stuff. So I think it helps to set a goal, whatever works for you. That can be monthly, it can be quarterly, it can be yearly. You sit down and go through um, all the products in the bathroom and see what you need to get rid of. You know, I, I don't think there's one set plan for everybody. So figuring out what works for you and most importantly, what's achievable is the best thing to set you up for success. If I said I was gonna go through my, all my products every month, I know I would fail. I know that I would. But every six months, that's something realistic for me. Or every year, that's something realistic. But do, do what you can and do what works for you. Um, keep what you use daily in accessible places. I really like this strategy. Um, trying to designate that the medicine cabinet or the drawers um, at the sink are only for things that you use every day. The rest of your products, the rest of your medications or vitamins are stored in a separate bin or box in another area. So that can help reduce your clutter. Um, and kind of beyond that, each family member can have a designated spot. This is John's drawer, this is Cindy's drawer, and then this is my drawer. So having designated spots can be very helpful. Um, shower organizers, actually, again, going back to products, um, shower caddies was one of the suggestions that they had, but I've also seen shower curtains that have pockets on them, um, which are really cool um, and kind of get things out of the way. Um, and you can find those pretty inexpensive on things like Amazon, uh, Walmart, stuff like that. But I know that that helps to get things off of the shower. It's also a fall risk, right? I mean, if you have a lot of things that are, are in the shower, something can slip off of a ledge and um, you might accidentally step on it too. So onto the kitchen, um, again, declutter. Um, some general guidelines that they, they recommended. I don't know if I follow these guidelines necessarily, but I should. Um, canned foods, uh, they say to kind of get rid of those, go through that um, every two to five years. Cereal, typically about a six month shelf life. Um, condiments, one year. Dried herbs, six months flowers. Um, you didn't mention sugar. I don't know if that would fall into there. Um, three to six months. Any grains or legumes a year, pasta a year, spices six to 12 months. So again, finding time, whatever works with your schedule to go through um, and kind of get rid of all of this extra clutter can be helpful. Um, and trying to keep what you actually use daily in accessible places. So if there are spices maybe that you use more often, keep those towards the front um, or you know, keep the sugar in a place that you see it often. That can be very helpful. Um, keep non-kitchen things out of the kitchen. I know sometimes that's hard and the kitchen table becomes the office desk um, or you, know, you might have things all over the counter, but really that can um, decluttering those areas can be helpful um, and kind of trying to get things out of the kitchen and where they belong going back to the idea of giving things a home implement storage options if able i know sometimes these things definitely add up um, but some suggestions maybe for common things that you might be able to to um, get some storage options for or, having bins for different protein bars or cereal bars or um, children's juice boxes or snacks, um, have bins in the cabinets or in the refrigerator, um, which can really help. One of the things I did, I don't know if anybody ever watched it, I don't remember the show, but Marie Kondo, um, it's one of those shows, but I got the idea to put bins in my, um, in my refrigerator for the condiments. And the reason being was every time we would reach in to grab something, everything would fall. 
So now I can just pull my little plastic bin out and grab, grab what I need. And that's actually been very helpful. So just thinking about little things like that um, for organization can be really nice. So we, we tackled general um, home, the, the bathroom and the kitchen. So now onto our closets, um, hang things up. And when you do um, try to organize whichever way works best. You might wanna organize by work or dress clothes, by season, by casual clothes or item types. Um, put all tank tops together, all short sleeves together, three quarter length sleeves together. Um, that way you know where things are if something pops in your head that you know you might need. Um, and and if, if you put it away immediately, you can kind of maintain that organization. Um, another color, another suggestion was color coding, but I know that that's a lot, <laughs> a lot too, a lot, of, a lot of different shades with things, but that is always an option as well. Uh, routine is a common theme through our organization. So setting a routine for getting rid of, um, whether that be selling, donating things, um, that can be every season, once a year, whenever you change your closet, um, that's always a good time to kind of get rid of things that you, you haven't worn, you don't think that you're gonna wear, um, getting rid of unmatched socks. I know those sometimes take up some space. Um, if something's broken, try to get rid of it unless you think that you can fix it. And that includes shoes too. Um, you know, there are always places that are, are taking donations for that kind of stuff and then also helps you to declutter. Um, this is, uh, so kind of going back to that color coding, also using color coding hanger, coded hangers um, to find things. So I just kind of made this up, but all pants are on white hangers, all um, casual t-shirts are on green hangers. All dresses are on blue hangers. Um, if you're really into color coding, that's another way that you can take that a little bit further. So yeah. from the home um, and now into the work or, or if you have um, a work office at home, this would also apply. Um, one of the big suggestions was to limit horizontal spaces. So having extra dressers, filing cabinets, shelves around, obviously are good for organization, but sometimes they can actually be a little bit of a, a barrier because they're, those are the areas that things tend to pile up. Um, I'll go back to that example of the kitchen table. Things tend to pile up on that surface because it's a table. Um, so trying to limit um, horizontal surfaces in your environment can be helpful or just kind of setting goals for yourself to not use those to enable things to pile up. A large calendar or desk calendar can be helpful. Um, some other tools are notes, sticky notes, desk organizers, again going back to the labeling, um, checklists, uh, task flow charts, um, those kind of things to help kind of stay on task and make sure that you're getting things done. These things can also help kind of going back to that time management piece. Um, if you're making checklists and flow charts, uh, writing sticky notes for yourself and putting appointments on calendars, it can kind of keep you on track to get things done a little bit more efficiently. Um, finances. So kind of moving on, um, you know, I sometimes, I know that sometimes it's hard to remember when you have to pay bills and uh, how often and, and things like that. So um, I thought that this was, some, was something that might be helpful to discuss because um, everybody kind of comes up with their own plan. Um, but sometimes it, it does help to have some other suggestions um, to kind of modify what we're already doing. So the first one on here is auto pay, um, which I'm sure a lot of you know of. Um, auto pay through individual companies can be helpful. Um, and I was also reading that it seems like a lot of banks themselves, you can set up um, auto pay. So you can set up auto pay um, in one place just at the bank to pay all of your different individual bills. So I thought that was helpful. Um, kind of going back to the idea of like just trying to limit 
multitasking, limit having to do so many tasks at one time. Um, if it's all managed through the bank, then you just have to do one, uh, one round of bills. Um, alarms or reminders can be helpful or written reminders like on the calendar or the planner for pay dates. Um, and I like this one too, picking two days a month to pay bills typically maybe the beginning of the month and then a date at mid-month. I know sometimes it's hard when um, bills are due at different periods at the beginning and the middle. Um, so picking a good day, you know, maybe the first and the 12th, you, you go through and you pay all of your bills. Um, so having some type of, of set uh, designated days can be helpful. Filing and organized docu organizing documents is, is very important. Um, separate by folders. Um, you might be helpful to get a bill box or something along those lines. And try to organize your financial information by document type, um, whether you've paid something, whether it's unpaid, you know, whatever, whatever your needs are. Um, the idea is just separating information into different folders or different organizational methods. Um, make sure you're saving important text, like information, documentation, like for taxes, um, but shredding and throwing away any unneeded paperwork. Envelopes, you know, I know with a lot of these bills, we have tons of envelopes that they're coming in um, that can kind of lay around. Um, so shredding, getting a rid of, of any unneeded paperwork, um, envelopes, things like that is an easy way to um, get rid of this extra documentation and paperwork. Again, thinking about when's a good time of year to do this. One of the suggestions that the book had was doing it at the beginning of the year for the prior year. So you kind of start off on um, a clean slate um, in the new year. Uh, kind of going back also a little bit different, but I suggested with auto pay, looking into seeing if your bank um, themselves will do auto pay for you for all of your different um, services, um, utilities, car, you know, whatever you have. Kind of on a similar note, it might be helpful to limit how many different banks you use. So, or I'm sorry, banks or ATM cards, credit cards you're using. It can help for a lot of different reasons, but also if you have too many, you're putting more pressure on yourself of when things are due um, and how to manage them. Okay, and then we have some paperwork. So again, that practice of immediacy. Um, do things as they come up um, or kind of establish your plan or your goal for getting them done. It might be helpful to have boxes or folders um, labeled in and out. In would be paperwork that needs to be addressed, um, that, that you plan to address. And out can be um, information that has already been completed um, and filed already or stuff that needs to be filed. It's important to label your folders or consider color coding your folders. Um, and then with filing, file alphabetically um, or chronologically, depending on what your need is. You may need subcategories as well. Um, so if you have a utilities uh, folder, it might be helpful to then have um, gas, electric, water, um, cable and internet, all different subcategories. Um, another, I don't have this on here, but kind of along these lines as well, a lot of times if, um, you know, managing appointments and who you've seen and what suggestions are can be a lot. It can be very overwhelming. So a lot of times I'll encourage people to start um, kind of a medical binder and this would work really well with a medical binder. Um, having maybe all of your uh, therapy uh, treatment notes or, or homework in the section, having all of your medical oncology appointments in its own section. And then that taking it to the, the different providers can really help with kind of connecting the dots where things might kind of fall through the cracks. So if you have that folder and you take it, that can be helpful, or I'm sorry, a binder. 
And then the last part of this is, is finding some type of fireproof safe um, or filing cabinet to kind of keep everything safe. So it's great to be organizing, but the other part of that is making sure that it's all safe and secure. For shopping, specifically grocery shopping, um, something that can help with organization is picking a time of day um, or day of the week that suits you best. Thinking about times where it's less busy um, and, the, and also less busy days of the week um, and consider a gr grocery pickup. Um, I know this is something that was a lot, it was around before COVID, um, but a lot more popular now. Um, and I, I really like grocery pickup because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's also a time management saver. And I buy less groceries because I'm not hungry at the grocery store. <laughs> but, um, but those can all be very helpful for shopping and for time management. Uh, <clears throat> lists, um, keeping your list in the same spot. So I a lot of times will encourage keeping a magnetic list on the refrigerator um, or having a, a designated area in your kitchen that you can write things up, uh, on as you think about them or as you run out. Um, and on that list, include as much information or as little as information as you need. If you need a specific brand, write that on there. A specific amount that you need, write that on there. Um, you know, that, that can help you with finding what you need at the store um, and also can help with time management. Keep a list of general items that you get weekly and maybe add those to your list first. So if you always get bananas, bread, milk, and yogurt, put those on your list right away. And then that gives you free space to think about the other things that you might need. Uh, once something runs out, like spices, flour, sugar, milk, anything like that, add it to your list right away. Um, I know like I also try to put my, if I can't put it on my list right away, a like a spice specifically, I'll put it um, in a specific spot so that I see it. And when I, when I do remember or when I do see it, I'll eventually add it to my list. Um, and then cross out items as you add them to your cart um, as you're shopping. So um, I hope that, you know, through this presentation, you were able to gain some knowledge about some different organizational strategies, um, like I said, for home, for work, school, um, and, you know, feel free. I don't have any connection to that book. I'm not, I don't endorse that book, um, but, or financial association with it, but I thought it was a very helpful resource. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Um, we're going to stop the presentation here in a second, um, but you can always uh, reach myself directly at the Lemieux Sports Complex, um, and the number is here on the screen. And thank you. Thank you, everybody.